Welcome back to Supplement Science. I'm Dave Palumbo here with a very interesting topic. Uh, I have a Guillermo Escalante here who is an associate professor of kinesiology at uh, Cal State University in San Bernardino. And you conducted a very interesting experiment, something very dear to my heart because I'm a McDonald's lover at heart. You did a fast food diet for 20 days. Tell us a little bit about this whole experiment and how it worked out and what the results were. Because I, I find this type of stuff fascinating because so many people vilify fast foods and I always say you can eat healthy any way you eat if you, if you really set your mind to it. Yeah, a absolutely. Um, it, what, what was really interesting is, you know, the, the, the way it came about is I, I, as a bodybuilder for 20 years, you know, people are always worried about clean foods and non-clean foods. And, and uh, I really kind of wanted to uh, look into this, this myth and really kind of uh, point out that at the end of the day, it's all about calories in and calories out. So uh, what uh, my wife and I did is uh, we, we embarked on a 20 day fast food challenge uh, where we ate fast food uh, three times a day for 20 days. And uh, we did some initial uh, uh, startup stats uh, for myself because I have access to my lab here. I was actually able to measure body composition uh, with the ultrasound. Uh, we were able to do uh, post uh, uh, blood uh, glucose uh, readings and uh, triglycerides, uh, HDL, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, total cholesterol. And uh, we saw basically what happened. And uh, in, a, in addition to uh, just uh, to look at the effects of everything, what we wanted to do was uh, not implement any cardiovascular exercise. That was actually the, the coolest part because people always think, uh, well, you have to do cardio to lose fat, right? And then they, they don't understand that it's part of an overall equation, but it really is the, the smallest part of the equation. Uh, and really, if you're stuffing your face, even if it's with quote unquote clean food, uh, it's not going to work for you. Uh, so what I wanted to do is uh, really make a, essentially a, an extreme situation out of it uh, and really let people realize this, hey, you can actually implement uh, some of this fat food stuff. And, uh, you know, you can eat uh, pancakes, you can eat uh, white bread, you can eat bacon, you can eat cheese. And as long as you stay within a caloric deficit, uh, you can still lose body fat and uh, and make it work for you. Uh, mm -hmm. So the only two things, uh, the only two rules for the for the the 20 day process was basically to uh, try to consume for myself 200 grams of protein for my wife was 120 grams of protein. So basically about a pound per pound of body weight. All right, but and, let, me, and, let me stop you for a second. Yeah, because you had this rule of, of high protein, you really weren't. It wasn't about calories in calories out. You skewed the results of the test by eating a high protein diet, which we know protein in and of itself has a, a nutrient partitioning effect on the body to, to, to build muscle and burn fat. So you kind of cheated a little bit in a sense. I would say I cheated a little bit because I, I think, uh, you know, as, as you and I know, you know, the, the two most critical components to to uh, fat loss really are uh, number one, uh, the king is caloric deficit. And then number two is getting adequate protein intake. Right. So uh, I don't so but by, I don't believe doing, caloric deficit is, is as important as as high protein intake is. Yeah, I think I think that the results would definitely look differently if I if I would if have, you were eating uh, French fries say, as opposed to fucking burgers. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because because I did not eat that. In fact, when I when I presented that, those were some of the things. You know, it's like, well, you you went to In and Out, which as you know is a famous fast food chain out here. Right. And I said, yeah, I had In and Out, and I had a double double. But no, I didn't have French fries, and I didn't have the 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 full on uh, shake. I had I had the burger. Yeah. Uh, because you, I, I your bodybuilding roots destroyed the, 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 the integrity of this experiment. <laughs> <laughs> I biased it. I biased it That's just right. a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> no, but I, I what I liked about the experiment when you told me about it was that I didn't care about, I, I don't believe in calories and calories. I think that's crap. I think it's it's the macronutrient profile. Obviously, if you eat too much food, you're not going to lose weight. We know that. There is a certain energy. If you eat too much energy, you're not going to, you're going to store it. But I think what you proved was that you could eat in a fast food environment and make healthy food choices there so that you can lose weight without having to do cardio and without having to, you know, to, to take a million fat burners, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you, you definitely make, you know, make better choices. And, and at the end of the day, when you, when you try to order a menu, go to the menu, you basically look at, you know, more protein dense foods. Mm. Uh, of course it, it's more challenging at fast food restaurants because a lot of them do have a lot of, uh, most of the thing, most of the things that have high protein are going to be high in fat and high in carb. Uh, 
but you can't find them. Uh, you just have to look a right. little bit more. Were you eating the, were you eating the bread? Were you eating the buns and everything like that? I was, I was. So I, I didn't, I didn't make a lot of modifications in mm -hmm. that, but I will say in order to get the, the total protein content up for me for 200 grams, for example, without going over the calories, uh, it would require us to eat uh, other food. So it wasn't just fast food, although I ate fat food three times a day. Mm -hmm. uh, I got protein from, uh, we did have a casein or whey protein, uh, and we did have uh, cottage cheese or Greek yogurt. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, uh, you know, and we had some fruits and vegetables, but uh, I would say, you know, if a good 70% of the diet did come from the fast food itself. So it sounds like you were eating mostly protein and fat. It, it, that sounds like it was the high, higher part of the diet, right? Uh, well, for it would depend on the day. I would say uh, an average macro day for me would be, uh, well, and I'll, I'll give you the, the, the exact numbers here. Yeah, give me for, the readouts. My three -week the readouts. What's that? Yeah, the readouts. I want to know the yes, data. The, give me the data. <laughs> yeah, let me give you some of the data here. Okay, so I'm going to give you the three-week averages here. All right. So week one, my average protein intake was 201 grams. Mm -hmm. Week two was 206. Week three was 199. Mm -hmm. uh, so total average for the three for the three weeks was 202. My carb intake was pretty close to that. So I, I had 197 on the first week, 206 on the second week, and 213 on the third week. Right. And then my fat intake uh, was at about 60 grams. So between 60, 63, 64, or 60 grams. Even with all those so, burgers, uh, that's all you were getting in? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I was. So how many I, grams I would, of fat? Would, how many grams of fat is in a double double? Uh, a double double roughly has uh, maybe 30, 36 grams. You were there three times a day, though. How how are you not getting more than uh, sixty grams of fat a day? Well, if I if I had something like an In and Out, it would it would be typically maybe one time a day, and then the other days I might have something. Uh, that would be, would be different. So maybe I had, if I had like Jack in the Box, uh, one of the things that I ate uh, quite frequently was I would go to Jack in the Box and I would get their, uh, they have a chicken sandwich with bacon in it. So that one has about 24 grams of protein. And then you have the in and out which gives me 36 grams of protein. I mean, sorry, not a protein, a fat. So that gets me pretty close to the 60 mark. And then uh, my other intake, I might have pancakes in the morning with at, at McDonald's which has, of course, now the carbohydrate in there. Um, and then I would have uh, maybe a protein shake with that, with that meal. So that's how I would kind of balance out. So maybe two of my meals were higher in fat and higher in protein, and then another my, of my meal would be higher in carb, and I would get the protein elsewhere. Right, and you were only eating three meals a day? No, I was eating probably uh, average four to five, but mm -hmm. some of them, like my, my very typical breakfast, because get out in the morning, uh, I would... A typical morning would look like this. I'd, I'd get up uh, and I'd drink a, uh, uh, a scoop of casein and, uh, and whey protein to get out of, the, out of the door. And then on my way to work, I'd stop at McDonald's. In fact, I probably stopped at the McDonald's down the street probably 17, 18 times. <laughs> and then uh, I would either get uh, some pancakes or I would get the, the McMuffin, uh, the Egg McMuffin. Uh, and once in a while, I'd get maybe the Chicken McGriddle. Um, and those were my main, my main items that I, that I ordered there. And mm -hmm. then I might get one or two of those. Uh, then sometimes, uh, coming back at lunchtime, I might go to El Pollo Loco, uh, where I'd get, uh, one of their, their chicken wraps. And that one was typically lower in fat. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a little healthier. It, that's kind of healthier. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a little healthier. And then maybe for dinner, I might do the Jack in the box or the in and out or even like, I would even do like a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. I did that a couple right, times. Right, right. So yeah, I mean, you weren't eating terrible. I mean, you, what was your worst day of eating? Like what was the most horrible day you had? Um, I think the most horrible day, it was, it was, a uh, it was actually a day where we had a, we had a, uh, some family gatherings. So it was hard to get in, get in all day. So I, I had, a. I had pancakes in the morning with, with my shake, and then uh, uh, the family wanted to get some fast Chinese food, so we got some Chinese food. So I had some fried rice, uh, I had some white rice, I had some beef and broccoli, and Mongolian beef. But of course, the portion control was the key for that, right? I mean, I'm not having huge portions. Right. So, you know, my, my brown rice was, I mean, my, my fried rice was, it was a sad portion of, of fried rice, <laughs> Yeah. but so, I had some. I, so what, what I'm seeing here is probably, this is, is this kind of your normal eating habits? You just ate less food? Is that pretty much what you did? 
for sure, for sure. I mean, definitely <laughs> portion control, absolutely. But I would say, is this, is this typically days, what you eat on a normal basis? Do you totally go to for fast no, food? No, not at all. Okay. It, it was, it was, it was, it was actually really, really hard because I, breakfast is typically at home that I usually cook, you know, and and you know, I'll have. You know, I'll make myself some eggs and some egg whites and, you know, maybe some fruit and uh, oatmeal or maybe yeah. some, uh, uh, you know, I'll have a I'll have a bagel, something something much healthier at home. Right. But I'll cook it. Mm. And uh, we usually don't go out to eat that much. Uh, and when we do go out to eat, it's typically, you know, a, a healthier option sure. rather than than something that that's that's that was the way we did it. What now? Did your blood work change at all when you got your blood work after the, the three weeks? No, that's. That's what was really cool is, you know, I, I thought my cholesterol normally hangs out uh, pretty low, uh, you know, in the, you know, certainly between 110, 120. And, and my cholesterol when I, when I, uh, my total cholesterol was at 109 after 20 days. Yeah. Uh, my, uh, the only thing, well, my, my HDL always hangs out really low. Uh, and it's, well, I, I competed several months back. So it's, it's still low from that. So it's right. actually hanging out at 16 right now. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but usually it hangs, I have to work really hard to get it even into four, it's a 38, 40 range. So it, it takes a lot of work. So that didn't really change. My triglycerides were also in the, in the low one hundreds. And, uh, even my, my, uh, blood sugar, the one thing we didn't do it fasted, which actually, of course, is going to change the results. But regardless, my numbers were still there. I had eaten a cheeseburger at McDonald's about two hours before I did that, that blood draw. Uh, and, uh, I was at my my uh, blood glucose was still seventy nine. So, wow. okay. you know, obviously three weeks, twenty days is really not uh, probably enough to really skew blood work because you're so healthy the way you eat normally. So, you know, I would love right. to see like what a what a person who eats unhealthy all the time what it would do to their you know if that would change their markers at all. And probably like a six week study probably would have been uh, something that would have. Would have been harder for you to do it, but I think it probably would have. You might have seen more changes in, in that time. But I, I, I agree with you. I think if you under eat energy for the day, where your body is needs is is not getting enough fuel, it's gonna just intuitively burn up what it's eating. I mean, and, and burn some body fat. It's got to. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, basically, for me, with my normal energy intake, uh, you know, I I burn about I. I, I can maintain at about 3,300 calories. So by eating t basically just under 2,200, uh, that's a pretty big deficit. And same thing for my wife. She usually hangs at about 2,300. Yeah. For her to eat 1,400, that's a big deficit, right, obviously. Right. Now, you should do the same experiment now and repeat it, only eating low protein and see if the results yeah. come out different. I guarantee you, I know they will. I know you're going to gain fat, you know. Oh yeah, it it would it would be. I think it would definitely be different. Well, you know, just the thermogenic effect of, of food alone. You know, yeah. just you know, protein has has that high TAF and uh, compared to the other ones, I think it would definitely definitely be different. I mean, if I was eating uh, French fries and uh, and cheese only, uh, that would that would look like a different story. You should do it. Do it now. You, hey, look, you're a researcher. <laughs> now you got now you got to go do the other side of the coin and prove that the food choices that you make are more important. Than the calories themselves, you know. <laughs> that, if yeah, you want to be a real, you got, look, if you want to take one for the team and be a real researcher, that's what you got to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, that's why I might re try to get funding and recruit subjects to do that one for me. <laughs> no, you got to do it. Otherwise, it, it, it doesn't was... count. You got, we got, we need to keep the, the data pool consistent. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Can't can I, can I change the the sample right? right? The sample population. No, no. But I, I, it would be interesting. Maybe it wouldn't change. I don't know. Wouldn't it be interesting to see if you if you did do like I said, do more carbs, less protein, swap those macros. You know, swap. You know, do like maybe like fifty or sixty grams of protein and do more. You know, two hundred grams of. Uh, you know, fat and, and, you know, 200 grams of carbs and see what you get, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, just, at the same calorie, that would be yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, one thing I also thought of doing is, you know, uh, actually just a uh, gain fat eating healthy because this is, that's my favorite thing when people say, I mean, you probably see it uh, yeah. all the time. People say, I, I can't lose weight. My metabolism's broken. And I said, <laughs> and I'm eating healthy. I'm like, yeah, but you're, you're, you're eating, you know, uh, 5,000 calories yeah, exactly. of healthy stuff. I have like, girls of eating. Of course, you're not losing yeah, weight. Yeah, I have girls, girls eating 12 ounces of protein per meal. They want to know why they can't lose weight, you know, and why they're gaining weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I think this is yeah. a good experiment because it basically shows you that you can eat healthy 
or you can lose weight eating anywhere, even in fast food restaurants. Anywhere. It's all about the food choices that we make. And sometimes they don't even have to be that healthy. They just have to be skewed in favor of high protein because that's as bodybuilders is what dictates, you know, how, you know, your metabolism runs. And I think it was a good experiment. I, I do. I, I, I would like to see the flip coin just so you can prove to people that it, it is what you, the, the foods that you choose that are more important, okay, than necessarily the calories, you know, that you're consuming. Yeah, they definitely go hand in hand. Uh, but I, but I think that, uh, that, uh, the, the, the higher protein intake is, is definitely essential. I mean, that's, uh, you know, as bodybuilders, you know, we're, we, we, we know that, but a lot of people have trouble with, uh, but this would uh, prove it. Cause if you did look, if you did an, a same, an ISO calorie diet, and it was the same calories as you did on this, this diet, only you ate low protein and you gain weight instead of losing weight on the same calories and eating in the same foods in the same restaurants, except just swapping your meal choices, that would, that would certainly uh, validate the fact that the foods that we eat and, and the macronutrient you know, ratios that we eat are way more important than the calories. Because you could eat a low calorie diet and still not lose weight if you're eating the wrong type of macros. Yeah, it, yeah, it won't, it won't, it, or it won't be definitely as as uh, robust. It, won't it'll be, as be effective, it'll be yeah. much different. Yeah, yeah, that's the and 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 especially as in the physique world that 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 you and I uh, you know primarily sure. work with is we want to retain. You know, it's not. I always say it's not just about weight loss; it's about fat loss. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're losing a lot of uh, of your hard earned fat free mass, yeah. then uh, you're definitely going down the wrong hole. I agree. Well, Guillermo, thank you very much for stopping by today, giving us the results of this experiment. Is this going to be published, or is this kind of just you did this on a whim? You know, we we did this just kind of on the whim, but uh, I, I, I've had a, I've had a couple of colleagues that are maybe interested in uh, we, we might collaborate and actually recruit some subjects. The biggest thing is getting some some funding because obviously eating out is expensive. Sure. Uh, so if I if I can get, you know, uh, 15, 20 subjects and right. uh, get get them a little bit of funding to pay for their fast food. Yeah. Uh, and then and, and do the control be, group. Actually, like I, said. I love your idea yeah. where you could actually have one group eating. They eating. They're both on a caloric deficit, but maybe one group's eating a, a lower protein content and one maybe right. a higher protein content yeah. and see their differences. Uh, that would be a pretty cool study. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Definitely would. We, I, look, I love anything that, that gets the mind thinking. I want people to understand that, that losing weight is not necessarily about lower calories. It's about the food choices that we make. And no matter where you go to eat the food, you can always pick healthy choices. And even though you went into McDonald's, okay, you were picking, or, or in and out Burger, you were picking good food choices by far. And that's the reason why your body was able to drop you know, body fat going in there because you, you were focusing on protein. So once again, congratulations. Good job on the study. Let us know if you do a follow-up study to this. I'd love to report on that as well. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right, guys. And that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Supplement Science. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time. Thank you.